Okay, so welcome to the next part of the uh, Geopolitical um, uh, talk. Today we have Tomas Zdechowski. Uh, on the on the first um, uh, part, we discuss about the changes in the uh, UN EU um, propositions, EU Parliament proposition for the uh, treaty changes. Uh, so, uh, if you didn't watch it, please uh, do so in the in the link which is connected to this video. And in this part, we we are speaking with Tomas Zdechowski, a Czech MP. Uh, and we're going to speak about uh, international rela uh, relations and the geopolitical situation regarding what is happening now in the Middle East, in the in the Western Asia, and how it's uh, how it's in interconnected with the European affairs and also with our um, uh, Central European affairs. So, Thomas, of course, we are speaking about the situation uh, in Israel and in uh, Palestine, uh, in, in the Gaza uh, Strip. So we know, that, of course, the situation that uh, Hamas attacked um uh israel of course we we know that this is uh, uh it's a part of the bigger picture of the relations between israel and the palestinians and of course the uh, hamas uh, al fatah and all those uh, insurgent groups and so some some of them are called are called terrorist groups uh, of course the european union acknowledged that hamas is a terrorist organization uh, in interior politics so uh of course, uh, this situation, uh, it's, a, it's a war situation. Um, of course, it's influencing what is happening also with situation uh, and awareness what is happening on Ukraine. Uh, and the second thing is, uh, it can also inf influence European uh, affairs because it can push migration because the, of the refugees and, and, and we can have a new influx of migrations from the, from the Arabic countries. So, uh, and of course, there was also a resolution now in the United Nations, uh, which was, uh, which Czechia refused to uh, uh, agree on this resolution. It was in the minority of countries, uh, Pol Pol Polish government uh, sustained, and it was um, a resolution that I, um, it was about, uh, of course, uh, um, cease of fire and, uh, uh, and of course, uh, bringing humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip uh so my question first first of all how do you see this uh conflict did you suspect it, that it can happen uh and how you how do you you know see the situation from the Czechia perspective and from the european parliament perspective uh, from the european union perspective yes my perspective is absolutely clear what hamas did it was terrorist attack and they, it was so brutal terrorist attacks against the children, against the women, how they raped the women, brutally raped the women, how they really killed the small children. They really uh, cut the head of the women and children. And I think it's something what never ever in Arabic country, in all the world, can discuss about it, that it was terrorism. State Sub supported terrorism and Hamas is a terrorist organization. You are absolutely right, but not only for this decision, but for all the terrorist attacks, well, they did it. And in the, if Hamas sent it 3,000 or more rockets against the civil citizen of the state of Israel, they are terrorists. And Israel has it now. Uh, really right to respond of this terrorist attack, this horrible terrorist attack. And the Czech Republic is absolutely supporting uh, supporting um, Israel. And what's in Western Europe uh, happen, it shows that immigration policy in Western Europe doesn't function very well, because if someone will come outside and will promote that Hitler was the hero, we will take him to the prison. But if someone promoted that Hamas is a hero, we respect him. And it's not possible. I think it's absolutely stupid. And this uh, real, really flow of anti-Judaism is something what is it unbelievable. It's really uh, stupid propaganda against Jewish people. It's something what uh, I cannot ever in my life respect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I ha have some few questions for you uh, regarding this. The first question about information, of course, because uh, 
uh, always in this conflict, uh, we, we say in the war, the, the for, for first what is uh, is dying is the, the truth. So of course each side, uh, the Israeli side and the um, Hamas, uh, but also wider Palestinian side have, the, have their own narrative and of course they are making their own propaganda, war propaganda. Uh, it's also uh, was uh, on Ukraine, the Russians and the Ukrainians, of course, it's always like this. So uh, my question is, uh, do European institutions or other institutions have their own information about what is happening, or is only getting information from the from the Israeli source? Because, for instance, uh, about this raping and about this beheading children, I uh, I saw some information that though it was debunked about this uh, uh, beheading children. It also also was on Ukraine, that, uh, uh, but I don't want to mix it. But also about raping uh, children in Ukraine it was debunked. So uh, does European institutions have their own information sources to or reports uh, uh, that it's not involving the Israeli or Palestinian uh, Hamas uh, sources? Yes, we have it more than uh, 30,000 of videos of evidence of the people who were taking the pictures, how they Hamas behave. We have it uh, our own satellite systems, what shows how the Hamas was re really running from the from the Gaza uh, side to another side. So we can really control a lot of information, and we can check it. As you know, that we send it many members, um, member states of European Parliament send it to the Israel, uh, the. Uh, the expert for uh, um, for recognition for the pathology and for the recognition of the victims of the Hamas, and we have it really very good evidence about uh, about that how the Hamas behave, and um, I think that uh, there is a lot of things what absolutely shows that uh, the behavior of uh, Hamas was absolutely barbarian. And oh. uh, if you ask us about the about many more things and evidences what we have it, of course we saw uh, and we you can see on the pictures on the satellites how Hamas is uh, shooting the racket against uh, against the Israel. There is uh -huh. really very clear evidence, and this we had it the same very clear evidence about the Russian attack against the Malaysian Airlines uh, aeroplane against the Boeing 737. Also, I think that uh, Europe is not naive in this case. Uh -huh. uh, what kind of institutions uh, could, could you could you bring up uh, 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 to the viewers? What kind of institutions is there any? Institutions that uh, you're saying satellites. What kind of institutions are are, are obtaining this information? Uh, is are you saying about the? Uh, um, is there any kind of intelligence institutions like uh, that are you know working for? Yeah, the... they are intelligence and police institution. Also, we have it enough enough information about that what's happened there. And every time you can check all the videos, what the Israel presented, and trust me that you cannot see it because it was not a video from the Israel. It was the video from the uh, body cameras of the of the Hamas fighter. They took it because they were prepared to die. We saw everything. What they were really. Uh, uh, filmed in the in the kibbutz of Israel. Okay, so uh, and how do you judge these uh, retaliations? Because uh, of course uh, Israel has a sovereign right from Article uh, uh, Fifty One of the Charter of the United Nations to self defend. Uh, and of course uh, there are two there are two questions. Uh, I think that they're raised. Um, that uh, first of all, why uh, uh, Israel army and Israel intelligence, um, you know, didn't know that this uh, attack would happen, and there are some conspiracy talk, uh, conspiracy theories saying that 
they wanted to have this attack to to, to have uh, retaliations and to attack uh, um, Gaza Strip. And the second thing is that um, that uh, those measures uh, that uh, Israel is using are not proportional. And of course, there were some there was this resolution, but also. Uh, the, um, Mr. Guterres was saying about this humanitarian uh, crisis, you know, of course. So uh, the first question is why uh, Israel, uh, you know, was surprised about this, or it, or uh, are they were waiting for this? And the second would be, uh, and the second would be question: uh, Are those measures for from your side proportional, uh, you know, in the in, in the inter international humanitarian law perspective? There are two things what are mixed. Also, if you are uh, ask me about the conspiracy, I don't work with conspiracy because I'm politicians and I am really uh, based on the facts. Also, I don't like the conspiracy. I don't know why you will wait that someone will come and kill 1,400 people and why don't uh, why didn't have it uh, intelligence information also sometimes it's all also i think that it's very very difficult find someone who will give you the right information especially from the terrorist group and the hamas is terrorist group based on the families so it's very difficult really find someone who will have it the and we will have it information with so huge impact to change it uh, to prepare someone for the terrorist attack yes there are some conspiracy about it that egypt sent it information that hamas prepare the attack but it's something what never Israel decided as a right information. And I think that uh, we have to wait it. Uh, if really Israel will someone publish more information about that. Mm -hmm. And about, the, the, the uh, about... Second about the proportional uh, retaliations, are this proportional, you know, bombing, uh, we, uh, you know, not civilian uh, also objects and uh, like. How do you see it? And, and of course, the blocking yes. of Gaza Strip, blocking the humanitarian, uh, uh, blocking outside the, the, the power source, the water source for the civilians and so on. Yes, I was in Egypt um, six months ago and I spoke there with uh, people from the military and intelligence services. And they know that through the humanitarian aid, they are smuggling to the Gaza Strip the weapons. Also, it's very difficult, and sometimes you are doing this blockade for short times to show uh, the people what Hamas is doing. Hamas has it now enough, uh, enough uh, meal, enough oil, and enough uh, medicaments in their tunnel that they are using them only for themselves. Also. They have it, every, everything, what you can imagine, is enough in Gaza, uh, Gaza Strip. But uh, Hamas, as a terrorist organization, is controlling everything, and they put it to the tunnel. And uh, special things, what you have to say, under the biggest, biggest hospital, Hamas decided to have it on in an underground some special tunnel system and in this tunnel system they have it the base military base with all the operation centers also it's sometimes crazy to stop them and to really um, israel don't so, but, to... so, but, so, thomas because i i i, I saw in, uh, i uh... Because the Israeli um, ambassador in the United Nations were uh, saying, of course, and other uh, officials that uh, in the hospital it was destroyed or attacked, uh, there was a Hamas uh, base. But uh, first, first of all, uh, I think there is no uh, evidence on on this uh, uh, this uh, topic. First of all, uh, for for now, uh, there is no information, reliable information about it. 
And second would be, uh, if it would be, it's of course the violations of the international humanitarian law, because of course there were some civilians, so you can't attack even if there are, uh, you know, if there is basis, if they, you could kill a lot of children and women and, and wounded people in the hospital. It's also a, a violation. True. So, so uh, even they if there would be a base, no, it's a violation. That's true, but I only ex uh, explain how the situation is difficult. I'm not saying that Israel must to kill really innocent people. I'm saying how is it difficult really to judge the situation. And what Hamas is doing, they are every time using the children. Also children with bombs so against the, the um, Israel soldiers, etc. Also, Hamas is a terrorist organization, and the response must be in the same way you are fighting against terrorists. And with the terrorists, it's never easy huh? to make any, any deal. Also, you have to respond very hard. And of course, sometimes if the uh, Israel will do offensive. They don't want to kill some civilian people, but they will, because Hamas will use the civilians against the Israel tanks. I'm absolutely sure about it. So, what what is the European Parliament uh, stance on the on this issue? Uh, did the European Parliament make any resolution or uh, official? Uh... I don't know, uh, stand on, on, on this on the problem. Uh, is there was any document or, or a political? We are saying that Hamas is responsible for attack against the Israel. Also, it's political decision. What what is saying who is responsible for the this crisis is Hamas. Second thing is that we are saying that we want peaceful solution. Also, I think if there will be time, the Europe is prepared to make the negotiator between the Israel and Palestine. Third things, what is it uh, very important? European Union is prepared to help innocent people with humanitarian aid. But four things, what is it in resolution? We don't want it to give it some money to Hamas. Also, we are prepared only by the humanitarian aid and send it to this humanitarian aid to concrete people through the organization what were checked with the European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, so is this already the resolution that already passed or is like some propositions that are discussed now? This, uh... It was a resolution what was passed uh, last plenary but we are still discuss, uh, discuss how to really behave in this conflict for the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we see how it is your your, your um, position on this on this topic. Uh, but uh, how do you uh, do you think that this also going to influence the migration crisis? Is it going to be a new influx of of migrants from the Middle East to the to the to the European uh, Union or the European Economic Zone, of course, because we have Norway, we have uh, Great Britain. Um, Great Britain is outside, but basically also uh, it's kind of interconnected. So, uh, is are you thinking this? It's going to be a new influx of of migrants from this uh, crisis. It can happen, but uh, I am saying very openly that we don't want the people for what are supporting the terrorists. Also, really, people what are now openly saying that Hamas is really a hero. We don't want these people in the Europe. And I'm absolutely sure that uh, not so many states from the European Union will be happy with these immigrants from the Palestine side because in security level, we are speaking about these people as uh, about the threats also. It's very difficult to find the solution for them. And if they want to really go outside from the Palestine, they have to stay in the first secular country. And I think it's not Europe. Also from the Palestine, you have to go outside to the Jordan, Lebanon, Egypt, somewhere, but not to the Europe. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so my my last question uh, would be about the situation uh, because next next year we're gonna have uh, of course European Parliament elections, so uh, in June. So how do you judge uh, what are, are going to be the topics uh, of these elections on, and what is them, uh, what is the going to be the agenda of these uh, elections and uh, uh, you know what what we're going to discuss in 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 eight I think in eight months now from now. Yeah, main topic it will be immigration. I think it will be number uh, it will be topic number one and topic number two will be the economic situation because people feel a little bit under the pressure, also they will really ask for more um, economic cooperation and the things which are linked with economic prosperity. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last one, maybe the, this is the next one. How do you judge these uh, elections in Poland? How do you view this? Uh, uh, we don't know if we're gonna uh, if the law and justice is gonna form the new government. Uh, I think there is uh, less, uh, less less situation that is gonna be that the opposition, so the civic platform, the uh, the new parties like the uh, the the third way, which is a peasant party, and also the Holovnia, um, so kind of a, also liberal uh, um, party, and also the left. So we're gonna have I think central left coalition um in poland after eight years uh, of uh, conservative social conservative uh, um, um, uh, government so how do you judge it uh, from the european parliament european level and also from uh czechia level i mean of course the uh european, european union was holding the money from the COVID recovery funds uh so do you think this new government gonna change this money gonna pour to Poland or not <laughs> or the situation this uh, crisis between EU Commission and uh, Poland gonna change or how do you see this do you have any ideas or reflections I will speak now uh, like friend of the Poland not as a politician and from the perspective of European Parliament because in European Parliament you have it many people what doesn't know nothing about uh, Poland but they will comment Poland every day because they seems themselves as an expert but from my position not so many uh, things will change I think you are very Pro Ukraine oriented, pro America oriented. You have it your own goals. You do infrastructure. You do a lot of reforms. Also, uh, if there will be the government of Donald Tusk, Donald Tusk will continue with many of these things. But uh, general, I think it's about the international public relation and international presentation of Poland. And if there will be Donald, Donald Tusk, the presentation of the Poland with, will be much more better because problem of, um, of Kaczynski was that he saw everywhere a lot of enemies and sometimes he was pushing on the button a little bit too much. Also, it's sometimes it seems that it can be problematic. And uh, Kaczynski lost a lot of friends in the European Union. And it was a little bit a pity how the Poland was sometimes isolated. Because you are doing a lot of things. You helped a lot of Ukraine. And I think that... Uh, uh, if you will go to the Poland and you will be really open, you will find there a lot of progress what you did last six, seven years. Okay, Thomas, uh, thank you very much for our discussion. I think it was quite inter interesting and and um, um, and we, talk, we talk about the issues that we are now in October 2023 uh, thinking. So what's happening in our region, what is happening in the Middle East, and what is going to happen in the next year. So uh, hopefully we can speak next time. Maybe we're going to speak about the Central uh, Asian uh, situation, which is also uh, 
um, a topic that uh, are not so much f familiar to the European um, opinion in, in Poland and Czechia and others, but it's uh, quite quite important also for the uh, Euro-Asian uh, relations with Russia also uh, because the Asian uh, Central Asian countries are also between kind of a <laughs> Between hammer and the and the, uh, <laughs> between hammer and the sword, we can say uh, for now. So, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, I know that you came today after some, uh, I think, training, uh, military training. So you're a, a bit tired, but uh, but intellectually. That's true. That's true. You can see. <laughs> <laughs> but intellectually, it was it was fine. So of course we we, we don't have to agree with every everything, but it all it's sometimes it's more. Uh, uh, interested to talk with a person who have different kind of views. So uh, thank you. Have a good uh, night. And thank you all that you watch it. And hopefully you're going to share it, like it, and, and comment it uh, with our friend from Czechia, Tomas Zdechowski. Thank you very much, Michal. Have a nice uh, evening. Thank you. Thank you very much.